Hi everyone, uh, it's Kidding from the Mercs. Anyone that actually follows our YouTube channel uh, may know me as Webster. Me and Gizzy have wanted to do tech videos for a while. Um, basically just expand the type of videos on the Mercs Airsoft channel and hopefully expand to a wider audience as well. But we also hope these videos will prove to be useful to beginners and seasoned airsofters who may want to delve into the tech aspect of the of the sport. <clears throat> um, even if you just want to kind of maintain your own rifle, uh, I'm hoping that these videos might help you a bit with that. Um, I've been airsoft for about seven years. Um, out of those seven years, I think I've probably been working on airsoft for about five years. I work on most of the lads in the team's airsoft rifles. Um, I repair, upgrade, fix, and maintain the rifles, including my own, obviously. Um, today I want to do a complete disassembly of a GNG Raider. Um, this is a Raider here. It might not look like one, uh, but it was at one stage a normal, plain looking Raider. Um, I want to do kind of take this thing completely apart now. Everything from um, the dust cover to you know the show you the inside, how to take apart the barrel, and everything inside of. Because I want to make sure that I go through everything. So that if you're looking for something very specific on YouTube, I know it can kind of be difficult to find. Um, I'm going to split these videos up into parts, so I'm going to start with the externals, and then go into the internals, and then lastly, I'll reassemble the rifle, because obviously the last thing you want is a rifle in peace on your desk, and have no way of putting it back together. Um, if you happen to stumble on this video through a YouTube search or even a Google search looking to take apart or even fix a certain part of your rifle, um, check the description because there is timestamps that will mark individual parts that I take apart. So, for example, if you're looking just to fix the two-piece outer barrel on a Raider or even trying to remove the, the buffer tube, they will say in the description at what times I start taking those parts apart. Just if you if you were looking for a specific... Um, areas to take apart. Um, like I said, I'm going to take this whole thing apart. I It's probably way more than most people would even need or want, but I just thought, you know what, I'm better off just taking it apart and splitting it up, like I said, in the description for people, so that way it's completely taken apart. Um, now, before I begin, I'd like to point out that this is going to be slightly different than other M4. If, you, if, you're, if you're following this YouTube video while you're taking your own M4 apart, um, it's gonna vary slightly now if I know that something varies from a different brand M4 say a D-Boys GMP or even I don't know VFC King Arms I will mention that while I'm taking something apart like f very specifically right here is a two-piece outer barrel that the Raider has Um don't know why GNG decided to do that but you'll see when I take it apart and if you have your own Raider you might have had a problem with the two-piece outer barrel before so I'll go through all that Um, as well, there might be some parts that I can't actually take apart because screws or Allen screws or whatever it is might have been worn down over previous, over just over years from previously disassembling this rifle. But again, I'll go through how to actually take it apart if I can't, and I might even have a few examples around around lying around that I can actually show you how to take it apart from different M4s. Um, although this is an AR-15 style. Uh, Airsoft rifle, so it's an M4. If you can take apart mo one gearbox, so this is a V2 gearbox, you can pretty much take most of them apart. But I would obviously suggest you go if you're if you if you are new to this, you know, follow this video, and you know, ex do expand obviously, but be very wary of different style uh, gearboxes, different versions of gearbox. Uh, if you are following this step by step while I'm taking this apart and you yourself are taking it apart as well, I would suggest you watch the video, pause it and then do do that part that, that you just pause. So in other words, watch the video in a few minute intervals instead of just trying to follow me step by step because I might be going a bit too fast because I'm kind of used to taking these things apart. But there might be a few th times where I tell you to hold something in place because it's under tension and if you're not kind of realizing that it's under tension, you might not be holding it properly and it could fly out. So my advice is to watch it pause it and then kind of go back on it and try it yourself then. Um, I'm just going to put this M4 aside and I'll go through a few of the tools real quick before we get started. First off is a set of Allen keys like this. <clears throat> kind of handy, I'm pretty sure you can pick them up anywhere really. 
Uh, next is a small toolbox like this. Has everything in it, a few screwdrivers, needle nose pliers, um, kind of a, I wouldn't even say a multi-tool, but it's just kind of a handle thing where you can stick different uh, heads onto it. Next is a long screwdriver. This is mainly for the buffer tube. It can also be used for the uh, pistol grip, really handy. I'm pretty sure most people won't have long screws like this specifically because this is really long but you pretty get away with most other type of screwdrivers that you find in a shed or whatever. Um, hammer. I know this sounds a bit excessive for an airsoft rifle but you'd be surprised how easy they are just to kind of tap out stuff. Like obviously don't give it a hard hit but just, just tapping stuff out might be very handy. Uh, lastly is a barrel nut tool. Um, this is kind of a weird one. They are quite handy to have, but a lot of people might not have them. But you can pretty much achieve the same result with a needle nose pliers like this. And I'll go through what I mean when I'm actually taking out the barrel. You'll see what I mean. Um, what I did previously before I got this was use this little tool, which I found in the shed. And I'm pretty sure it's off some sort of tool to adjust a drill. I'm not too sure exactly what it is. Some people might know who have more experience in kind of, you know working with tools but I'm pretty sure that's what's off but it's handy because these two prongs actually fit into most delta rings on say M16s or um, M4 carbines so it's kind of handy so uh, I'll go ahead and take this rifle apart I'll take this radar back over here and the first thing you want to do is obviously make sure this thing is safe no beeps in the chamber uh, take the mag out take the battery out and in the, in the case of a radar you want to press this just to make sure the spring's decompressed so the first thing I always do when taking apart M4s and most of the rifles if I can is try and make it smaller. So what I'm going to do here is split the upper and lower receiver by popping this pin out. Now if you've got a Raider and I'm following this, you might just need to push it out if it's kind of new. But mine is so worn out I can just kind of pull it out with my, my nail. If you've got a different style of M4, you may need to... Um, this front, this, this section here might just be a screw, so just take it out and then the other side will come out. Um, when you're taking this apart, make sure you keep you hold on to this um, charge handle. If it's a different style of M4, this charge handle will actually come with the upper receiver. But there is a small chance that this upper receiver might catch. And what that basically is is there's a small little piece on the gearbox on the outside of the gearbox that will sit inside a groove on the charge handle. And basically, what you need to do is pull the charge handle back and up slightly, and then pull this apart. Um, it just depends on kind of M4 you have, so just be wary of that as well. When you're taking these apart, make sure that if you're if you're working on say specifically GMP gearboxes or GMP rifles, that you keep this closed because I know GMP certain M4s like their Senshi model and I'm not too sure maybe other models as well. They don't they don't actually close properly. Like I can close that and I can flip it back open, but some M4 brands you can't do that. So if you are doing that, make sure you close it while you're opening it because it might get caught in this on the other side and I know it seems a bit obvious now because I'm going to do this but if you're kind of taking it apart and you, you can't get this off it could be that the dust flap is actually caught on the outside of this so I'll just put this upper receiver away for a bit and this on the radar this is a self retaining pin so it doesn't actually come out most of the rounds fours probably won't be like this so you can just pull them out but I'm going to close this separate from breaking now this next piece is you want to grab this spring and pull it forward until it comes out a little a hook and then lift it off upwards. So I'll put this over here. And that's basically it for the lower receiver. Um, I'm going to actually work on the upper receiver first. I just wanted to show you how to take apart that, that charging handle because if that spring breaks or you pull it off wrong, um, they are extremely hard to find replacements for. So the next thing I want to do is just pull out this barrel. Obviously, not a stock barrel. Next thing I want to go through a quick little tip for you guys is uh, rubber O-rings around the threads for your flash rider and your um, suppressor or even barrel extenders. You might have it had a few times that you put the suppressor on or you put your flash rider on and then all of a sudden it's way too tight. If you put a little rubber O-ring around the threads, it'll actually act like a sort of a buffer that you can't over tighten it. But it's still tight enough that you can't actually loosen it too easy, but give it a good twist and it'll come loose again. It's a handle trick keep in mind the first thing I'm gonna do here is take apart this take off this peg box because it's just gonna get in the way and there's no real need for me to, to, to have it on here so.
Okay, so the um, the rail system itself is held in by four screws. There's one here, the front just behind the A post, one here in front of the upper receiver, and then two down below. So there's, there should be one here. I lost mine a couple couple, um, couple months ago. And there's another one underneath this panel here. Now, if you're if you're working on a stock rider, this part panel party isn't going to be here. And I'm going to just pull this XTM rail panel off. Now, if you're working with these, then um, Mike Pull recommends you buy their rubber dummy rounds just to use. I could probably use a few inner rounds I've running around here, but two screwdrivers work just as well. It saves me spending money. I don't need to. So. I'm going to actually show you guys with the two piece outer barrel because it's a pain. So, what you want to do first is take apart, take off this, take out this screw here in the front. Make sure you keep everything that kind of goes together, keep it together on the desk. Um, I wouldn't really recommend work on a bed or the ground, especially a bed because a lot of folds and stuff in the duvet. Um, ground as well because I recommend just kind of taking the, the rifle up off the ground. Even make something. Um, just get a piece of wood or something and prop it up on, on um, a box or something and put you better again than work on work on your bed. So, the like I said, it's two piece outer barrel. So, from here onwards, it's actually a separate piece than the piece that runs in the inside. I um, don't know why they did that, but I'll show you what I mean when I take this all out and I'll reassemble it without the rail and you can see what I mean. But, there's, when you take those two screws out, there's a panel here behind the A-post. You want to push that down. And then you can get access to the little two little grub screws, one on each side, one here and one here, that you can access through this hole here. So I grab the Allen key and loosen this. When you're loosening these, make sure that you loosen just enough to allow you to pull the A post off, but try not to loosen too much that they come out. They will loosen enough to allow you to pull the A post off without the Allen keys actually the Allen screws actually coming out. It saves you losing them. So that should be fine now. And I'll pull this off. So I've actually lost this once or twice because it wasn't actually put on properly when I first got the radar and I didn't realize how this was designed. It was only until I started talking to people and realizing how it was designed that I started looking into actually trying to fix this. But um, basically this can kind of sometimes come off because it's, usually it's not sit, sat properly on from the factory so it can sometimes just come off when you're gaming and if you lose it, I got lucky with mine but you can't actually lose them properly. So next. I'm going to pull out the gas tube. This gas tube should just pull out. There you go. Fake gas tube. Doesn't really do anything for air stuff except aesthetics. It might keep some models of M4. Might actually, it might be keeping the delta ring from twisting. But in the case of a radar, it doesn't do anything. Another screw. Now, because I've lost the other screw, I don't actually need to take out the last one. So this is a pull out. Rail. I'll put this to the side. Don't need it. So now, I'll show you what I mean with this two-piece outer barrel. Um, if you're working on a different M4 while you're following this video, it's likely that your M4 is going to look slightly different up here. And your M4 is going to run all the way across. And this A-post here will slide off across the barrel. You pop these two pins out. Little grub screw, usually underneath the sling swivel. Pop that out as well. Take this flash rod off and the A-post should just slide off the front. Uh, make sure you pop those pin, pins to back in when you're, um, even when you take the A-post off, it says you're losing them again. So, I'll take this off and go ahead and take it apart to rest. If you've got a different style M4, especially one that has a plastic handguard, this is going to look completely different. And that's, you've got a delta ring system and you need to kind of twist it off. Again, that's what this is use, useful for. You need to twist it off, latch this in and then twist it. And it should just come off, and then the rest is pretty much the same. But for now, um, if you're following this to take about a radar, you can leave these two this, these two grub screws in. They don't really do anything, so I'm just going to leave them in to keep the this piece of metal in place. So there's four there's four holes in this uh, nut here, and in the four holes there should be two screws and two of the holes. Now mine are directly across from each other, and that's the way it was when I bought it, so it should be like that for you guys as well. So you want to loosen the two grub screws that are in those holes. And then, sometimes you can just loosen this with your hands. The last time I used this, 
I'm actually gonna loosen this real quick with this because I might I might have, might have over tightened it last time. So there you go. But again, you can just use this, and basically what you want to do is, like I said, put this on top of that, and then put the other half a needle nose pliers on top of one of the, the little blocks, and then just close and twist that way. And it should come loose. Take this off, take this off, and then out comes the barrel. If you have a spare outer barrel lying around, um, a normal outer barrel should just fit in here. If you want to keep the, um, if you want to kind of get rid of this weird design with two pieces outer barrel, just make sure that you. This is all going to be different then. If you if you change the outer barrel, it should be compatible, but just be, make sure that all this still fits on, because it might not work. Exactly how you expect it to work. Just be wary of that. Now, uh, before I put this away, like see, most people would stop here, but I actually want to show you guys how to take, take apart this dust, this dust cover or bolt cover, depending on what you want to call it. Um, most of these will have a metal rod, like this one here, but most of them will have a little groove either here or on this side, and that will basically contain a little metal C clip shaped like a, the letter C, obviously that's why it's named, that's why it's called like that, but what you want to do is pop that C clip out, you might need to kind of fiddle around with two screwdrivers and pop it out, in the case of this radar it doesn't have it, so I'm going to just pull this out, make sure I don't lose this spring, and there you go, so I'm just going to put this back together real quick because I don't want to lose any of this, now, don't need this, put, put this aside. Forward assist, like I said, on a radar, it has a function, it decompresses the spring. Most of the M4s it probably doesn't have a function. There's a little pin here on other brand M4s that you can pop out and then this comes out. But really, there's probably no point in taking it apart unless you really want to take this whole thing apart. But like I said, I can't do it on mine, but I would, that is how you would do it. Um, now we come across the first piece, I can't actually take it apart because I don't have a screwdriver that's small enough. If you're taking this apart, you'll actually see how small this screw is. You would need an absolutely tiny uh, Phillips screwdriver to take this apart. But basically, if you if you were to take this apart, what you would do is take that screw out while holding this panel and the back panel here in place with your thumb and one of your other fingers while you're taking the screw out. Because there's a tiny spring in here that actually allows this little arm to come up and down. And if that falls out and you lose it, they're extremely hard to find because I can't actually emphasize how small it is. It is actually ridiculous how small that little spring is. And then once once that screw is out, you can pop this this panel out here, and then that should give you access to the spring and this little arm. These arms here that hold the dust flap closed break sometimes, but if you kind of go easy with them, they, they should last. I mean, this has lasted me now however long I've had this radar, so I think about three or four years. Um, so it should be should be fine. But that's how that's how you would take it apart if you wanted to. Just move on to the lower receiver now. If you have if you have a normal radar, like a stock one, um, you'll probably just have to kind of take the stock off normally. Now, what I need what I need to do here is actually open up my stock because mine has a, a MOSFET in it. Next thing I want to do is take off the buffer tube. These things um, can cause problems depending, especially with aftermarket stocks. And if you're building your own M4, they can be a lot of hassle because you need to get the right buffer tube that will not wobble itself. And you need to get the right buffer tube that won't cause the stock to wobble. But um, basically there's a screw in the back of this. It's usually kind of a hybrid between a flathead and a Phillips head screwdriver, a uh, screw. Again, so we're going to use this really long screwdriver for and loosen this. Again, some other M4s will have this screw inside a metal washer. You'll see it when you take it apart, but that metal washer will actually come out. It's likely to come out with the, the screw itself. Um, 
There you go. Show you what I mean. There's a screw there. There's a metal washer. I have a, I have a metal washer that's built into it. So basically, the metal washer will have a little gap for the wires to go through, and then another another little hole for the screw itself. Um, it's likely that if you have a different style of M4, the washer actually came out. It's, a, it's usually a semicircle to allow this, the the wires to go through the bottom of it, and that will come out. That just makes it easier for you to feed the wire through. Um, but other than that, it's essentially the same system. You can pull this out. Now, in the case of a radar, you can just separate the wires here, make it easier. And I'm going to make sure I don't damage my, my MOSFET by pushing it back into the buffer tube. Here's it over there. Um, sling mount. Take that off. Next is the uh, pistol grip. Now, what you want to do here, here is put your thumb here in the middle and press it down while you're taking these screws out because the spring... There's a spring around the um, shaft of the motor that's actually pushing against this plate. And A, it might fly off if you're not holding it down, but more importantly is that if you're taking off one screw at a time, it can actually kind of push the plate out at an angle and you can actually damage the screws themselves. So, release this slowly. Off now. Um, this little plate that's set on the motor is just, it sits inside the, the base of the pistol grip itself, which basically just pushes against the um, motor. But I'll go into that when I'm taking apart the, gear, the gearbox. So, these wires might look slightly different to mine, but it should essentially be the same system. Take the spade connectors off and pull the motor out. This is a stock Gingy low torque motor. Um, it's I want to say it's good, like as in it's good because it's still working. But actually, for you know, if if I if I, re I really should replace this with a high high torque motor. But basically, these things are magnetic, guys. So be careful when you're putting these around, especially if you're if you're putting stuff back together. Like if you're reassembling your rifle and you've if you've lost screws, check these things because it's it can sometimes happen that your motor has picked up some of the screws. So check them before you start rooting around on the floor. And um, don't put them near hard drives because they will wipe hard drives. Next I'll use this giant screwdriver again and there should be there's four holes in the bottom of this pistol grip. Usually there's only two screws in it though and they're usually diagonally across from each other. And um, get a light if you can't see. And try to keep the screws inside the pistol grip. So try to keep them in the holes themselves because it will be a lot easier for you to put the grip back onto it if the screws are still down in, in the holes. Yeah. Pull this off, but be really careful with these uh, the red and black wires because they're actually angled. The spade connectors are actually angled and if you just kind of start pulling it off, you might actually rip these off, and then your rifle is basically useless until you get it fixed. Um, like I said, two screws in the bottom, try to keep them in there, like that. And if you can, put, put this up against the wall like this, or something else, just to keep it from falling over, because if it falls over, those screws, like I said, might come out, and then it's just going to be very annoying to try to put, put them back on. If they do fall out, try to put the screws back inside those holes, before you put the pistol grip back on. So don't put the pistol grip on and then try to feed the screws down inside the pistol grip because if they if they, if you miss it, they can actually go into this hole here which leads into the gearbox itself and it's just gonna be a pain to try to get them out. I have to shake it around a bit. Next I'm gonna take off is um, the magazine catch. Now, I wanna show you guys something. This magazine catch is actually, it's not really an aftermarket one, I just wanna had lying around. Um, why? I decided to change it, I don't know, probably some reason for a couple of years ago, but this is probably what yours is going to look like if you've got a stock radar. It has a little screw inside it. And um, what you want to do is get a uh, Phillips head screwdriver and just loosen this. And that's basically how, you, how this will come apart. Now, um, I'll show you what I mean using my own. So if you've got this kind of style mag catch, you want to press it like you would if you were releasing a magazine catch. I'm going to push this fake bolt back so I can actually push this bolt catch backwards or inwards towards the gearbox so I have more room to work with. And then I'm 
you want to pull this out and twist it anti-clockwise. This comes out. Now, while you're doing this, make sure you press and hold this, the button itself in, and then it might get stuck in there like this one has. But don't release it straight away because it's under tension by spring. So there, it's just, you can see the same thing. There's just different designs. But I'm going to put this back together like this because I don't want to lose any of these parts. So that's probably what yours is going to look like. Um, or else it's going to be a different design. But like I said, I want to go through differences in designs if I know they exist. So that was just an example. Next is this pin here, just above the trigger guard, the trigger itself. Um, you might see other, might see other pins here above the um, selector switch and another one just to the right of the magazine catch. They are fake. They're, they don't do anything. They do stuff on the real one. What they do, I don't know. But they do. They're probably keeping the trigger, trigger mechanism or something on the real one. But um, I want to pop this out, so I'm going to use my hammer. Give it a like, light tip, tap. Okay, there you go. Again, like I said, it might seem a bit excessive using a hammer, but it's kind of the quickest way to do is flip back over, and I can pull this out. Now, these pins have, um, they're kind of serrated on one edge, on one end of it, and what you want to try to do is push it out from the side that push it from the side that doesn't have the serrations on it because if you if you try push if I were to try push this in from this side with the serrations on this side what I'm probably just going to try to do is push through the entire length of the rifle well the width of it anyway and that's just going to cause a lot of friction and it might not, not, might not necessarily damage anything but it's just going to be a, a pain to try pull it all the way through whereas if you just push it from the other side the serrated edge just comes out first and then there's no, nothing else there's no real friction to stop it coming out, so just be careful. That if you hit, it, if you hit it, and you hit it out, and all of a sudden it comes out the other side, and you notice that the first bit you see there's nothing on it, push it back in the other side and punch it from the other side, and then it'll come out. And um, next, and I'm gonna take out this pin. Just gonna push it, the screwdriver. Um, unlike the front, it's not self-retaining, so it just comes out again. You might have a screw here that you need to take out on this side, and then this just pops out. Now, um, take the get, take out the gearbox of the shell. Uh, what I usually do is flip it to kind of in between semi and safe. Gives a nice angle just to push it out. Again, be careful with the wires. They they can take a bit of abuse, but you know if it if it's caught in something, just have a look. Um, don't just start yanking around. Now, there you go. That's out. Now, before I do anything else, I want to take out this. There's a there's a spring here on the outside of the gearbox on the selector, selector plate before you do anything else I would suggest you take that out with a flathead screwdriver put your finger on it and then try to take it out like that just don't lose it um, it's just a practice I got it into you might not necessarily need to do it yourself but when you're kind of moving this around while you're working on other pieces of the rifle you tend to move these these gearboxes around it needs to come out anyway when you're disassembling the gearbox, but I take it out as soon as I take the gearbox out of the shell because if I'm going to be moving this around, it could be that this kind of pushes in and it could flop, um, could fling out and then I lose it. So um, I'm just going to take them out every time I, I uh, disassemble a gearbox and a rifle itself. So I'm going to put this aside for now. Um, a few more things before we end this video. The bolt catch bolt release. Um, obviously fake on most airsoft rifles. It could be that there's a pin here on the side that you need to punch out in order to, for to lift this up, but usually they just kind of come out in an angle like that. So I'm just going to take this out. Like I said, take the whole thing apart. Now the last thing I want to show you guys is the selector switch. This is something that I've had a problem with for years before I figured out how to do this properly. And most people that will I want to change the selector switch or even tighten it. We'll come at an angle like this and I try to tighten the screw. Don't do that. It will wreck the screw inside the, the back of the, the selector switch here. So what you want to do is pop this out here. Um, it might not look like it can come out, but it does. Um, and the way you do that is you get a screwdriver. You can also use a um, an Allen key or something. And... If you've got a plastic body receiver like mine, you put your thumb against this just to give it a bit more rigidity. And you basically push this, put the, the head of the screwdriver up against this, the back of the plate here and pop it out like that. If you've got a metal receiver, it's going to be a lot harder to get out, but it will eventually come out. Just give it, you know, put a bit of 
force into it, it should come out. Now what you can do is just put the screwdriver to the hole and then you can loosen the screw here. Um, now, this is the second piece I can't actually take apart and show you guys because my screw has been worn down over the years. But I do have a sector switch here that I can show you guys with. And when you're taking these things apart, be careful because there is a tiny ball bearing, which I have one here. You can just see how small it is there. And that ball bearing basically sits inside inside here. It sits, the spring sits in this hole here, and then the ball bearing sits on top of the spring. And that's basically where you get that clicking noise from. Because there's holes on the outside of the receiver that this ball bearing will sit in every time you click it. So, when you're taking this apart, make sure you put your thumb against this to stop this from rolling out and falling off. And then take the screw now this screw is really short this is one here I right, just lying around in the parts box it's a really short screw like you, you can see there it's it's very short so it'll come out pretty quickly and then this it will just be sitting on the inside it might come out it might just fall out or you might just need to get your nail in behind or a screwdriver or something to pop it out and then like I said make sure you, you you hold this up against the receiver and then put the receiver down and lift it up lift it off straight the spring is likely going to stay there, and if you're lucky, the ball bearing will stay in one of the holes here. If it doesn't, it might just fall out, and you need to grab it real quick. I would advise you get a tiny bit of blue tack, like I mean, minuscule, and put the blue tack down into the hole here, and then put this the spring in. That's what I did here, and that's probably that's why it's not coming out. That's why the spring's staying in there. So that's the um, that's the the sector switch done. So that's that's basically the whole M4 taken apart. If if you have any questions just put them down in the comments or PM us or go to our Facebook page if you have um, other questions. The next video I'm going to do is take apart the gearbox which is going to be a separate part because I don't want to overload this whole video with just taking apart everything in one go. But like I said if you've got questions post them in the, the comment section we will reply to you and stay tuned for part 2. Thanks for watching guys.